four, three, two, one. We're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Or rather, I should say good evening to another exciting <laughs> episode of Campus Care Ed Talks. It is an exclusive platform where stalwarts of the education come on board to express their viewpoints on burning topics covering the education fraternity. Before I begin, let me quickly introduce you to EdTab. We are a 20-year-old IT company engaged in providing matured and futuristic school ERP processes and systems, CRM mobile apps, to the various schools across India and help transform them from good schools to the best ones. Today in Campus Care Ed Talks, we will indulge in a brief session with our guest speakers and learn about the flexible curriculum structure to create multiple exit points. And for students who are watching us right now, this question is for you. Have you ever walked into a classroom and wondered, when will I ever need to know this? I remember because back in uh, when I was learning algebra, I often wondered, where will I ever use this? This no notion is often set by the schools to inculcate critical thinking, community awareness, problem solving skills. But the question, does the rigid curriculum promote all the above? Let's find out from our speakers for today. What is their take on the same? Our first speaker is the principal of Amethyst International School, Chennai. Ma'am is an avid learner and has a rich experience of more than 20 years in the field of education. She is a keen educationist, resolute in discovering how children learn to shape classroom environments and student leaders. Ma'am has backed several awards like Star Award from GISS, Singapore for her outstanding contribution okay. to school's growth and many others for her remarkable contribution. Please welcome Sucharita ma'am. Sucharita ma'am, welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share my views and suggestions to all. And I'm very happy to you know see all the students and other uh, speakers participating. And I'm also looking forward to learn more things from you all. Thank you so much. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Moving forward, our <laughs> moving forward, uh, our next educator is the executive director of Vidya School Gurugram. Ma'am is a passionate educationist with more than forty years of experience and has held some senior leadership roles in different <laughs> educational institutions. She's a recipient of many prestigious awards in the field of education and community development, like the Amity Excellence Award for outstanding contribution in the field of education and many others. Please welcome Dilruba Kalsi, ma'am. Welcome on board, ma'am. Hello, good evening to everyone. And a privilege to be on this platform. And um, I'd like to express my views possibly on the system of education and flexible curriculum in the country. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, next we have is the principal of Bharat Ram Global Gurgaon School. Uh, Ma'am is an exceptional academician, instructor and innovator with over 23 years of extensive experience in the administration management, education management as well. Ma'am ensures complete proficiency in ensuring students' personal and professional development in line with the curriculum initiatives and in education industry parameters. Over the years, she has published various research articles and reviews in esteemed journals, skill set. Please welcome Anju Badwar, ma'am. Welcome on board, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Yes. Very good evening. And I'm really privileged to be here, part of NTAG and this channel here. And I would love to learn more about what is this NEP and would like to share my views as well. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us your valuable time. And last but not the least, we have, let me introduce you to the President of Governing Council at Sri Global School, Gurgaon. Sir is a global educator who has been recognized for his contribution towards education, not just in India, but across the globe. He's made several contributions to uplift society by educating young scholars and give them a recognized platform to prepare them for the future. He's the recipient of various awards and accolades like the Swami Vivekanand Global Award 
in the House of London's law in the House of Lords London and many other prestigious recognitions. Please welcome Mr. Deepak Singh. Welcome on board, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me and being a part of this uh, <coughs> this uh, platform. Yes, sir. All right. Now, before I begin, first of all, since uh, uh, you all have uh, given me your valuable time, I would really like to take this forward. Uh, but on this auspe uh, auspicious occasion of Guru Purab, uh, because you are also all our gurus. So thank you so much for your valuable contribution. I, I was just, uh, you know, researching about your profile and then 30 years and 40 years and 20 years you've given into field of education. So thank you so much for that, all the educators. All right. So, Guru Pura Bhi Lak Lak Badai and let's begin. Uh, so, uh, Dilruba ma'am, my I would like to begin with you uh, that why is it imperative to have a flexible curriculum? <clears throat> I mean, agar hum piche se bhi dekhe jai, to, uh, we have always, we never had a flexible curriculum. And uh, whether during, whether uh, was it the intention our education policy was made earlier? I start. Yeah. Yeah, okay. please. So I'm, um, uh, I'm a strong advocate of uh, Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences because I believe that uh, humans excel in different areas. So it's imperative that all educational institutions provide a conducive environment that will address different learning styles and give students the opportunity to identify their strengths and optimize their potential. It will also give teachers an insight into the dynamics of a classroom. And I'm so happy that NEP has taken this on and has introduced a lot of flexibility in the curriculum in the sense that um, uh, NEP, that's the New Education Policy, has adopted a cross-curricular pedagogical approach, which right. means that art, culture, and sports has been integrated into the curriculum. So examples from art and culture are going to be taken to teach concepts in science and math, and um, um, sports has been integrated. So um, examples from sports are going to be taken to um, develop skills like collaboration, team spirit, self-discipline, self-initiative and a host of life skills. It's multi-directional with a lot of stress on skills, critical thinking, development of scientific temper, so that you know, our learners develop a love for art, culture, concern for the environment, health and wellness, and along with that, uh, mathematical skills and computation learning has also been stressed. So a lot of emphasis on design thinking and data science, which is absolutely essential if India has to take a leading role, uh, India has to play a leading role in the field of artificial intelligence. Um, another very important feature of the NEP is that no longer will subjects be compartmentalized into silos. So uh, clear-cut demar uh, demarcations between science, commerce, humanities, and vocational subjects has got diluted, and it's now one integrated holistic curriculum. The performing arts will be evaluated at par with scholastic subjects, and um, students will also have the flexibility to choose a host of subjects. So you could take up history with biology, and with maths. So uh, it's not going to be absolutely, um, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be a watertight, rigid structure that we roll out to our students nowadays. Right. It, it's going to be, yeah, a lot of latitude, leeway will be given to the students. And um, I think that's a very important step forward. And um, also, students may sit after class 10, join in class 11. And uh, the um, uh, policy has also made a provision 
for um, different models for the board. So it could be annual, semester, or the modular system. So um, I think that flexibility is important because each child develops at his pace, her pace, and uh, in a safe learning environment without any impositions on learning a subject that the child does not have an aptitude for or finds that uh, it's a challenge to surmount. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Dilruba, ma'am. Over to you, Deepak, sir. Why do you think now the need has arrived for this? I mean, if we look at about our uh, curriculum, I guess during the British Raj, it has been the same thing that they wanted, um, you know, uh, administrators and clerks. So that's how our system was overpowered. Or maybe it had somewhat of the reflections of British Raj at that point. Uh, why do you think it is now imperative to have these multiple exits? You know, now the time has come. Is it, am, I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Yeah. You know, sir, everybody, now the duty of the school becomes to take out the uniqueness of the child. Mm. So we cannot give them the rigid slavers, yes, this is for you. So the flexibility of the slavers is the need of the hour. Because with that, they can reach to their maximum potential, which we were not able to give. We were just giving them, we were just teaching them what you said from the time of the Britishers till today we are teaching them the same line, same same NCRT books, but we are not taking them and showing them the what horizon. Instead, the school should learn from the child now. The time now, the school, because there's so much of potential in the child, the child is having its own uniqueness, child is having the qualities of a god inside them. Mm. The school instead now, the time has come, school should learn from the child. Because we have been telling them the same history book, the same geography book, the same civics book. But, and what you said is right, they wanted us to be the administrator. And a time has come, Indians are flourishing all over the world. Yeah. They realize their potential, they realize the uniqueness and the value system what India is having, nobody else in the world is having. Right. So, my main concern is the flexible curriculum is the very much need of the art because we, how can, when a child is a good sportsman or a good writer or a good artist, how can we make him the good sportsman or artist while making him study the science? Absolutely. Are you getting the point? Absolutely. So, so we have to focus on what his attentions are. Right. And he may come out to show the world what different things he is having, what caliber he is having. People may not even think of because as you know, everybody is having the unique quality which no other person has got it. Right, right. There is also a famous phrase which says that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb the tree, then it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. But why now? My point is, what has changed all of a sudden? I know this should have been actually done 10 years back down the lane. When we were still, uh, you know, when internet was still taking over. Now, don't you think so, Sucharita ma'am? I'll go to you. Don't you think so? We're already too late. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I would agree that we are too late. But at least let's give it a start at least now because there are much other curriculums that have already started this you know and uh, we can visually see the growth in, among the children who are under those curriculum i don't want to name them so as mr deepak said yes children are born with talents and skills it is only our duty as school uh, school leaders or educationists or teachers to just identify them give them opportunities to identify their hidden talents and take it forward as their profession or career or at this point for pursuing their higher education etc and as we were you know like in earlier days we were all uh, asked to visualize if something is taught we need to visualize, but it's not the case now. You know, children already know they are living in that environment. They have already seen that. It is just showing them to feel how it is. You know, they need to be given those opportunities 
or the learning experience that is experiential you need to just experience it learn it and take it forward to the next level so i think that is what we as facilitators have to do and the school leaders and educationists that is what i believe the skill development is to be concentrated more rather than academic academics of course is important it is a part of their career but developing their skills owning their skills you know the critical thinking that all all every sort of thinking skills and other skills are equally important presentation skills everything is important for a child to excel or you know focus on their successful career i feel that is very important and this nep has really given us that uh, you know what to say the opportunity for us to be flexible um you know not make it a rigid one give importance for the liking or the choice of the children make uh, and get you know get them into the line of their whatever choice they make with passion and interest and come out successful absolutely ma'am yes hold hold that thought for a minute because i'm going to actually end this in a circle and um, because i've been having these webinars for a very uh, since 2 uh, 3 weeks i've been taking these webinars and i had so much insight to gain from every educator to be honest so i'll go to anju ma'am anju ma'am ma'am spoke about experiential learning right and nowadays experiential learning blended learning kinesthetic for kinesthetic students and for kinesthetic learning and all these things they are very uh, uh, these are the terms which are being thrown around very uh, repetitively these days but before british raj right i'm again because since this is only the beginning of the webinar i'm again going back to the same thing we had a gurukul system in our gurukuls it was taught that uh, there was no there were multiple exits and entry points as well and there was no chalkboard learning it was all experiential learning correct yes so yes are you, are we adopting a new system or are we going back to the old systems yes definitely old is old whatever our indian system our traditions they have taught, taught us and we are the same but yes with the world coming to the that level we are just making us at par with the globalization at par with the super power so that is what is the aim they have put up to make this education to transform or make the reforms to make india as a global knowledge super power to to reach to the world to of that standards we are coming up but yes from our roots we cannot miss our roots and we have to follow up that what entry and exit points yes definitely they were there at that, those times as well but now they will also be having a bank a system of credit where a child can you know any time go and get back to the same course or whatever different changes he would like to try over he can just try that so that is what our policy this nep is trying to give a liberty a flexibility a multidisciplinary approach that is what we are welcoming it for absolutely so moving forward um that's why i love these webinars because there are so much to gain from each and everybody has a different point of view and somewhat of a similar view because we all know what nep is capable of doing if it is correctly implemented to be very honest yeah. so True. uh moving forward dilrupa ma'am advanced technology has to become a mandate these days in a school framework let's be honest so uh in terms of adopting new education policy what technological tools would you use uh to you know so that it becomes uh, easily adaptable and relatable to a student so um we um, switch from in person classroom transactions at um, the vidya school to um virtual learning platforms during the pandemic and i think uh, the teachers took to online learning teaching you know the very uh, smoothly the transition wasn't as checkered as we thought it would be and it was also fairly well received by the students and um, i'm happy to add that um, nep has created an education tech forum in which they laid a lot of stress on digitization of education and um, they are now working on creating digital platforms 
upgrading digital infrastructure, capacity building, content, keeping in view the needs of the schools. And they're going to be also creating great digital learning platforms, which are going to be available to the schools. So um, that's the path forward. And at our school, what we've done is we've, um, in order to facilitate um, the incorporation of technology, we've got technology very well integrated into the curriculum. We have, um, for example, several laptops, right, um, connected to one internet. So, you know, they work all at the same time. Of course, there are uh, some power glitches, but um, we've also given uh, laptops and mobile computing uh, devices to our students to facilitate learning. And um, I feel that um, irrespective of the school you're in or the class you're in or where you are, online learning has reached the rural areas also. I'm not trying to say it's 100%. Uh, there have been challenges, the children have been without electronic devices, but at least we've made a beginning. And uh, the government's supporting this endeavor because it's digital India now. And uh, with all the digital uh, platforms, that's the path forward. We can't afford to ignore digitization in our education, uh, in our educational system. So, um, that's what we've done. We've gone um, high on digital, um, uh, you know, educational uh, transactions. All right. Dilruba, ma'am, uh, taking cue from that, uh, Deepak, sir, was yes, NEP yes, responsible for that very quickly, very crisply, uh, or was it because of the pandemic? See, see, my friend, uh, as you told me, that we are going there, and it is a fact. Yeah. yeah. And how it is a fact that earlier we used to use thumb, and because of education, we started using signature. And now, now again, we, have come, we have come back to thumb. So we have to come back to the things which have got values, which will make us. Now, there I was seeing once in there's a story in Mahabharata, a small that. Uh, Bhim, who was a very good warrior and he used to uh, use his gada, he used to have his so he was applying the bow and arrow. So he said now you are talking about the exact policy no? So the Krishna said you use your thing which you were using, what are you doing with the bow and arrow? So you have to see now you have to, the same thing applies on us where we think the child can do better a child has got more potential. There we have to focus and we have to appreciate the child. Yes, right. the, the child or my children, you can do this better than that, what you are doing. So the exit policy, what you are telling, I am just giving you an example of the exit policy. That where the policy, where the child is doing or performing good, I think so that has to be encouraged. Because if you encourage that, the more things of that is going to come out of it. And whatever policy, whatever he's been doing, maybe he find more interest in the things which he wants to do. Up now see one thing. Today there's a problem that after graduating, people don't get job. True. You know, this this happens when they are not happy with their education. Sir, in fact, 98%, the, the CEO of Tech Mahindra also said that 98% engineers who are getting out of universities are unemployable. So that is what, because they are not 98 happy. 98% is a huge number. So just, just saying, so that is what I'm saying. That they are not happy with the education. They are just doing it for the doing it that they are doing education. Education should be fun. Right. Education should be fun. Education is the treasure the knowledge which you have and everybody wants to impart that everybody wants to know from you that is the knowledge mm -hmm. that is the knowledge and, and how this knowledge will come with the turn and twist if you see a child is is knowing or is having interest in the other thing switch on the other thing and we have to so my main aim is that my main 
I'm just trying to tell you that education should be fun, not only taking the degrees and going for jobs and applying for jobs. When education will be fun, people will be after them that what you know, please let us know. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, but sir, what I wanted to discuss was, um, I multiple exit and entry points are there. But see, uh, Bam said that technology has to be an integral part of it. Right? But I wanted to know, is it because, because what I've noticed is that during Corona time and during this pandemic, there has been a rapid acceptance of technology from the uh, school's point of view. And which was earlier was not there. But however, because everything went online, now there is a rapid. Is it because of the new education policy as well? Or was it because of Corona times and that everything had to go online? Deep, Deepak sir, are you there? Yeah, see, I'll tell you, India is number one country in depression now. India is coming as in the number one country in depression. Now, children were having only this option of interacting with people online. Mm. And if the people, because they could, have they could take their heart out, if a child is not allowed to meet their friends, not allowed to go to the school, not allowed to play, so what else right. the child, and, and, the, and some parents, what they were doing, they were saying online education is not useful. According to me, they do not know anything. Yeah, yeah. That's because in online education, at least the child was able to take out his heart out. He could talk to the teacher, he could see the friends, he could have some uh, expression in his face. Why India is coming up? This is again, I'm telling you, India is number one country because many parents say the online education is not of use. Because of this, so many children are facing this problem of depression. And the people and the children, those who were online and those who were interacting, they are still better. So they were, this was the only pandemic, this was the only option. And with this option, so many things now the children know much more things in computer what, what elder people do not know. So the technology has played a very important role and when with when this pandemic was there and still going on the children those the parents the children learns from the parent the parents those who had got they were smart enough they knew yes this this online education is there to help a child to grow right true true uh, so, Charita, ma'am, so online learning is there for a child to grow. That's absolutely true by Deepak, sir. Uh, so, if we have to talk about online learning, because earlier schools and educators, and in fact, as a parents as well, we used to tell our kids or maybe, you know, students that, you know, don't spend too much of screen time. Yeah. Don't spend too much time. But then that's why, because Deepak, sir, if we talk about it, then it also conflicts a student. Ki pehle to mujhe mana karte the aap log. Now you aapko aapko hi rahi nahi na. Ab aap par class mein nahi ja sakte. Class mein nahi. See the learning education should not stop na. Right. If you if you not tell the child to do something, usko sapna to aayega nahi kya karna hai. Right. So you have to give the direction to the child. Like you are giving direction to the computer, you have to give direction to the child. Yes, you will learn something from online, from your teachers. Right. So, so Charita, ma'am, what I would and what my viewers would like to know, how to, uh, you know, actually help a child in understanding this, that, you know, now, of course, because there is no other option left, let's be honest. It is too dangerous still for kids to go into schools. And the moment schools will open, I'm pretty sure the rate will rise up. It will spike up. So, how do you convince your students? So, Charla, for online education, for online classes? Ma'am, for online classes. How to basically calm them down? Because okay. sir also said that they're getting into depression and sitting at home is being depressed. Yes. 
I yeah, it's actually a very um, uh, nice topic, and uh, what Mr. Deepak said is absolutely I do agree with that because children, rather than parents stopping the children from not attending the online classes, it's actually children when they attend online classes, they are really doing. Well, at least the learning, if it's not happening, they are listening to what teachers are telling. They are looking at their friends. So the mental growth or the mental stability is much better when compared to children who are just sitting at home without any facility. But I would say like uh, in my experience in our school, uh, it's only the parents who don't send their child to uh, online classes is very minimal. I think most of the parents have understood. Maybe in the initial few months, they were, you know, waiting for the school to open. But now they have thought that it is left with no choice. We cannot keep a child for more than uh, six or eight months at home just like that without even sending out. So many parents have come up to the conclusion and uh, putting them for online classes. But there are some who are not having the internet facility. I think the digital uh, technology you know, plays a major role. Again, children are not having that facility. So maybe the school can take uh, you know an opportunity. And what I would suggest is online classes rather than being only academic. You know, if we give them a chance for doing hands-on activity or showing them or making a little more interactive and participative or engaging them, you no, know, it would be really fun. And uh, children will not have that much of uh, pressure. You know, when they attend the online classes, so the interest also would be built up in, among the children. That would have been added. So I see if I, you know, one period I have dance, one period I have karate, something which the child can even jump and do. And next period, if you see the child's uh, uh, distraction is very less, they try to contribute more to the uh, teacher's, uh, you know, uh, teaching or other learning process which is happening in the class. So that would be a better way of approach if at all online classes are to be continued. Uh, absolutely, ma'am. Anju, ma'am, I am coming to you. And to be very honest, ma'am, uh, Sucharita, ma'am, I think so online classes will continue uh, since Dilruba, ma'am, is from Gurugram and uh, 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 Deepak sir is also there. So we know when pollution hits, the schools mm -hmm. get closed. Yeah. <laughs> so naturally, <laughs> this, uh, kids won't have any option. Now when the pollution hits, the classes will go online. That I'm different yeah. about. So Anju, yeah. ma'am, what are your viewpoints about the same? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe in online classes, definitely, because here the child gets to not only learning to know, it is learning to do as well. So it is both ways the teacher and the student both are putting the effort. As we ask the children to also do research or make PPT or do some presentation or share presentation, it is both ways, it is not one way interaction which is going on in online mode. Whereas in classrooms, many times it may be one, one, you know, one time, one side only. The teacher is interacting and speaking and giving lectures. But here online, both are equally putting their efforts. And so that teaching learning process is healthier. And our children wait for their classes. As Pam said, we are also putting equal, you know, amount of time for dance or music class or activity class or any such thing where the child enjoys more. Yeah. So that is what how we have to balance the child's activity then. And this way it balances his mental stability as well. Right. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure because uh, these conversations uh, actually made me understand that during the beginning there was a lot of uh, hesitation towards adopting the technology. And quite frankly, the biggest factor that was there was training the teachers. Uh, as a head of the leader, as a, as a leader of the school, I'm sure you were all familiarized, but certain teachers, they don't know how to use Zoom calls or maybe uh, Microsoft Teams and everything. Kalchi, ma'am, how did you take care of this? Because did your students did your students become the trainers? Because that has also happened yes, to many people. that happens because um, I find our children are very tech savvy and um, definitely... Um, some of them uh, are better adept uh, at technology than what our teachers were. But our teachers fell into the blue green parks. You know, workshops were conducted. We had um, online training sessions. And um, because, uh, taking off from what the other speakers said, there was no choice. We did not have an alternative. So we were pushed into the digital space. But 
we tried to make it as wide and encompassing as we could. So along with scholastic subjects, there were post scholastic subjects like music, dance, art, theater. A lot of counseling happened. So um, like the children um, faced um, challenges in um, understanding certain difficult concepts. So um, what we did was we conducted doubt theory classes. And um, especially we had a, a large segment from the underprivileged background. So our classes were customized to meet the needs of the students. The classes were held sometimes late in the evening when their parents got back because there was just one electronic device at home. So uh, they did not have access to um, mobile phones. So when their parents got back, then they could get on to these online classes. So what we did was we broke up uh, the class into smaller groups. So there was a one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction between the teacher and the court, right? And um, that was coupled with a lot of online counseling sessions so that, you know, they um, would not feel the, uh, you know, they would feel deprived of not being uh, in school and not having in-person transactions. Because, Frank, if you ask me, there is no substitute, no matter what we say, for in-person classroom transactions. Right. The body language of the child, you feel, uh, you can uh, sense the child's uh, feeling. You can feel the pulse, actually. When you look into a child's eyes, you know what the child is, where the child is. That is not possible when you have online classes. The child could be staring at you, but his mind could be wandering elsewhere. So that is why, you know, um, a lot of learning didn't actually take place. So there were online classes happening in theory. But when we did an impact assessment, we found that um, uh, the learning that we expected, the deliverables that we expected were not really there. They were not commensurate with the kind of time we have spent on online classes. Very true. Absolutely. Very, very, very well pointed out. Uh, I wanted to bring the topic of uh, of assessment and everything at a later stage, but ma'am actually uh, mentioned it. So moving to Deepak, sir. Deepak, sir, uh, what initial hurdles did you face when it, come, when it came to adopting technology in terms of... Did, because I saw... I'll tell you what... Um, I saw this, uh, maybe a photograph or a meme. I don't know. Um, I hope my all of you are aware what a meme is. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, basically, I saw an old teacher. Uh, unke uspe, uh, with two rubber bands, there's a mobile phone that is being, uh, uh, that is there. And she's taking, just look at the dedication. I was so mesmerized and flabbergasted by the same that, Aage ek chota sa chalkboard and she's teaching and it's a uh, drawing group. That level of commitment is not seen. I mean, people call Corona warriors, doctors and everything, but I guess educators are also equally Corona warriors. Okay. But sir, did you, did your school face such type of hurdles when it came to teacher training? <clears throat> yes, they were initially, you know, when you, when some new thing starts, there is a problem. Right. Because many people are not aware of it. They don't want to, and many people, they don't want to learn it. And many people think, yeah, it is a, a short time. So there are, and there are many those who want to learn it also. So they have a mixed reaction. Like in the sense, um, because they said it is for a temporary phase. Nobody thought that online education will go for such a long extent extended time. So they were mixed reaction and then slowly and gradually teacher realized yes they have to learn it. They have to learn and slowly and gradually even children's parents are realizing yes they have to make a child realize and realize themselves to be internet savvy and to take classes online because you do not know till what time this or extension of classes is going to be. And right. only method we can give education at the moment is online. Right. So initially there were problems in and, and in every 
thing in every whatever you do when you start something you there are problems and hurdles so but now children parents and everyone is realizing online education is the need of the hour and for example we had 300 students 150 were only taking the classes online but now the strength has gone back to 280 or 290 see you getting my point they have realized it yeah yeah uh, when there is no way out of it they would have to yeah. any which way adopt it yeah when there is no way out when they know the child cannot go to the school at least he will learn from the teachers online and now for the online this we are calling our children to the school for example for giving the presentations like one ma'am said we are doing those karate activities yoga so that they can have a link with the school because even children want to come to the school right even small children they also want to come to the school and even parents want to send their kids to schools now <laughs> That is what uh, one parent came to me. He said, "Sir, I am unable to realize the elections are going on, the Kasan rallies are going on, everything is going on. But with the opening of the school, Corona is increasing." <laughs> I said, "I said I will talk to sir in this. I think so. You should discuss this topic also in the next <laughs> that all the things are going on. The wine shops are open. So the farmers are having so big rallies." The elections are going on in different states, but they say don't open the school because Corona will spread. Sir, I'll be very honest because uh, I I am unmarried. I am uh, I'm still thirty years old, so I don't know. But then I'll tell you, I see my young neighbors and everything, and they're like, we are terribly frustrated. Now, please open the school. So that that is what I'm saying. Even some parents call me and tell them. I said this is above my also. They're saying that. I think so. I have to go to Modi ji and ask that <laughs> your farmers' rallies are not giving Corona, your elections are not giving Corona, exactly. Your malls are not giving Corona, your schools opening is giving Corona. <laughs> that is so true. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get back to the script. Let's not go so off script, Deepak sir. All right. So Charita, ma'am, um, as. so said but our topic was not actually online learning or something it was <laughs> you had given it for it i that's why i said before the beginning that i have a tendency of going off script sometimes because i get involved and indulge in the conversation so my one thing which i really loved about the new education policy was not coding or anything but it talks about a very important aspect that is experiential learning yeah Now, yes. experiential learning can be anything. It might be cost inclusive as well. It might not be cost inclusive because I'll tell you what. According to me, so Charita, ma'am, experiential learning is that if I tell my landlord, my gardener, to teach me something how to plant seeds, that is also experiential learning. Correct? So, Very true. Ma'am, what is your view on that? Because I think experiential learning is something that we need to do. Yes, yes. 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 Y
in a very rather uh, very simple way there are n number of simple methods to take it forward it's not that we have to have a big model or we have to you know buy different things and only then learn the concept no the same concept can be dealt with a very simple process where again the learning is happening as equal to that so let's think it that way and give our time to frame the learning framework what i'm telling to concentrate more on that and train our teachers to take it effectively to the children by the structure whatever structure we have created and when it becomes a student centric classroom i am sure each and every child becomes a lifelong learner and that is the uh, you know strength of experiential learning wonderful and when you become a lifelong learner it uh, actually gives the multiple exits what all we talk about in the nep policy etc yeah yeah and yes. i guess that would be the aim of any educator to create a lifelong learner and as an yes. educator as an individual because uh, when we are learning our mind is yearning and our mind is churning right yes so anju ma'am over to you from becoming a lifelong learner to basically <laughs> creating a lifelong learner as an educator to uh, how will experiential learning play a part in it how because there for example fine Uh, let's say there are certain classes which i can inculcate or maybe i enthrust technology by augmented reality or virtual reality because that is also sort of experiential learning right uh, but then again uh, how will this actually improve apart from kinesthetic students because i'm there are also auditory and visual students so how yes. will that practically improve the quality of uh, education when it comes to experiential learning the experiential learning is to me the experience one gains so as i said it's not learning to know it is learning to do that is what we focus on these days so each child should get a hand on experience to go suppose we are teaching them something about maybe uh, to grow a seed from a seed some plant or to take them to the you know kitchen garden to give them an exposure or experience to observe to analyze to experiment these are the terms problem solving so that is what how the teaching teaching approach has to be and teaching learning lessons have to be framed lesson plans have to be made so that each child get that exposure rather the teacher explaining giving the lectures and that handouts or whatever but here what we do is to give them you know learning by doing they just right. do it they perform it they take it and they experience it and they learn it and it, they imbibe it that is how the learning should go on yeah there's a very famous quote by benjamin franklin where it's uh, where it's like involve me and i learn i remember the yes. last part of yeah. it yes. involve me yes. and i learn yes. right so that's actually very good all right uh now the second most important aspect uh, again not the coding or anything but there's talk about internships inculcating internships in school at school level which is i guess would be the game changer uh dilruba ma'am your thoughts on it so um net has made vocationalization of education an integral part of the new education policy so every child from class 6 onwards will have to opt for a vocation and a decided um, on the basis of the needs of the community and by the state and um, the child will then have to take on this vocation and study it for a good two or maybe more number of years and why the emphasis on vocational education and skill building because during their during this um, phase of um, incorporating vocational education uh, the child will have to do an internship so um, that's the period when uh, what they call is uh, not having um, school bags so the bankless uh, period when they will be doing internships with local artisans local potters carpenters right gardeners uh, blacksmiths and um, the the challenge that um, one would face is the stigma attached to vocational courses so there also there's a provision to do away with the social hierarchy stigma and to emphasize dignity of labor 
So um, vocational education now becomes an integral part of the entire school curriculum. And every child will have to adopt it. And the reason being is that uh, when they looked at the five-year plan for 2012-17, they found only 5% of India students adopt, uh, adopt vocational education, whereas in the U.S. it's about 52%. Why is that? Because there is no clear path chalked out for pursuing the vocation that you have opted for later on, once you graduate from school. So that again has been addressed. So that uh, whatever vocation you opt for, like you know, if you can get back to the Qatari Commission, class ten was supposed to be a terminal stage, and only those who were um, academically inclined went in for higher education. But it's not going to be so now. If you opt for a vocational course, you can uh, carry on with that vocational course right through school, and even enter college apply for a college uh, degree on the basis of that vocational course. And um, where we also have a commission, the National Commission for the Integration of Vocational Education that's been created by NHRT to ensure mm -hmm. that vocationalization of education becomes a reality and doesn't fall by the wayside. Right. And yeah. that's all part, I just want to add one more point, uh, point. that's all part of skill building. Why? Because I'm, I'm going back to something you had said earlier, the question you had put to the panelists, that why was, um, you know, skill building and NEP introduced at this point in time? It's because India now has a demographic dividend, which India did not have so many years ago. And we need to provide our youth between the ages of 18 and 35 skills. Otherwise, we are adding to the body of disgruntled youth right. who will take to antisocial activities right. and increase the law and order problems. So that is the reason that the government has set up the skill center and there's so much an emphasis on skilling, uh, not only by the government and um, of course NEP has incorporated that very well. So um, to meet uh, the needs of the country and 21st century um, skills and requirements of the country. Otherwise, our education system just falls by the wayside if it is not in sync with the requirements of 21st century India. All right. So that's actually good. Uh, Deepak, sir, uh, when we talk about um, internships, right, and let's talk about internship for schools, will I, be, will I feel safe as a parent that I'll let my kid go to or maybe some other stranger is coming. How successful do you think the idea of internship can practically take place in schools? Internship? Like, why not? The child, the children, parents, why will they not feel safe? Because when we are calling somebody to do the internship, we are well acquainted who the person is, what his skills are, what his attitude is towards the children, what his get up and how he talks. So there is, the parents will have no objection in the sense when, we, when school is doing something, school is responsible and when the principals are there, they are not going to put anybody on internship, they will see who they are putting to, isn't it? Right. So, uh, this is what it is and the parents will, will instead uh, they will feel happy because something extra out of the teachers is coming out to the children because the teachers are the regular teachers from teachers something extra is coming out so they will be happy I suppose okay uh, they would be happy uh, now let's move on to the other side of the pasture uh, so Charita, ma'am, let's say uh, here I would like to paint a picture if you may, uh, if I, if you may allow me. Uh, for example, uh, now, this is when the internships are coming in the house. Now, what if because there are certain, we talk about experiential learning. So let's say there are so many fields that are there, not only carpentry or plumbing or something, but like accountancy and then HR is there and then marketing is there and then sales are there. So. The government also mentions that vocationalization of these skills should also be there, wherein 
internships will take place in companies. Now, how? Of course, these company would priorly be vetted by the school, right? But then again, when it comes to, uh, I will still, as a parent, have a bit of concern. Don't you think so that my child is going to, whether it's an eleventh or twelfth child? Yeah, I get your point. Yes, there uh, it will be a little bit of hesitation from the parents side. Yeah, uh, I do agree uh, because when the child, you know, when we actually when we plan for field trips, if the parents are really concerned as to how you know safety of the child is very important and industrial it, yeah, many like, factors. Yeah. Like yeah. industrial visits so, happen here. Yeah. Yeah, it's something like that. Only really what you're telling, but yes, again, as uh, you know, as educators and school leaders, you know, we will be taking precautions on how it is uh, being uh, uh, the type is being done with the corporate office or you know a company or whatever it is with the school. But I would really suggest in this what is like small mini project can be internship can be done in house also. Okay, it need not be always. It need not be planned for the presence there in that corporate office or wherever we are planning. We can plan in a better way when the children are first given an opportunity to do mini like say accountancy is there, so they can be given some data to collect some data. Uh, manipulate it into whatever they learn. No, a P and L profit and loss statement or that. Balance sheet of something they can do for the company, and the project can be sent. And maybe they can have a day of guest lecture or a day of uh, session workshop day, wherein you know they will be given to uh, present whatever they have done or learn their mistakes or give them an uh, uh, idea of what exactly can be done, how the problem can be solved in a better way, and all that. Maybe uh, you know once in a while. Need not be that the, every day they have to go there. Or of course, safety from the school side is also very important. The measures to be taken for that, but we can, uh, you know, involve projects from other places. Say, if, if it's an IT firm, they can give a problem or you know a coding or something, whatever to be done. The child can uh, can be taken in the school itself. You know, then it can be taken forward when the child is matured enough, and you know the child can handle along with the teacher or whatever uh, person who is going along with them to have it in a better way when they go to that place. You know, it can so happen. You're saying also. there is a practical so, way. Can be both in house and uh, you know, purely need not be always outside. It can be in house also. Maybe a little bit of structure, uh, structural change is needed in that. Wonderful. So you are saying there is a practical way wherein we can achieve this. Anju, ma'am, what are your viewpoints on the same? Yes, I can share here the example wherein our twelve, eleven, twelve students. students when the new subject was introduced entrepreneur studies hmm. so we also did our make that uh, provision in our in house only in our school only and gave them you know a project like to have the heart or to have the you know handicraft work which they did which they sold out to parents only on ptm so like that or diyas or candles which every school is doing so that is an example set by our school to you know get our students into that entrepreneur subject And give them that exposure. Similarly, as Ma'am said, accountancy or banking or fashion designing or something like that, we can think of. So this NEP has given us, uh, you know, guideline and framework where we in we only have to find the ways out and yeah. taking of course safety and all those measures which are very important to a parent to a school because that reputation is always there. Wonderful. Yeah. I would like to add one more point in this. Uh, uh, see, like say for example, in occasional if photography is being, you know, not only accountants the other, yes. we can give the children the opportunity to take snaps for their annual day function. So whatever is being done in house itself, you know, giving them the exposure in house is the first step for internship. After that, they can be exposed when the child is really confident and matured enough to handle. You know, that would be a better way. So like as Anjuman said, it is purely our. Uh, vision and it's our thoughts that we have to put and frame it in a very structured way and take it forward for the learning to happen. Yes, I'd like to add here. So we have some of our ex students who have graduated who have come back to us as interns and um, they are working on research and documentation. So they're doing research on different projects that we give them to do, right? And they're documenting it, documenting the curriculum, right? 
they have a green school initiative that they introduced at the Vidya school. So, you know, they've gone hammer and tongs and they're learning all about the environment and they're trying to um, team up with the Gurgaon Municipal Corporation to um, go ahead with this green school project and just, um, you know, visiting the Samadhan hub. So our own students have become interns apart from the interns that we have interns who come and work in the school from corporate houses and from um, other NGOs and from educational institutions. We have a lot of interns who come from Delhi University and work with our students. They take classes, right? And um, they uh, you know, teach different subjects and um, they help with um, a host of activities. Wonderful. And I guess the biggest uh, initiative, which I love about the schools, which were not there in my time. It was not there in my time. But MUN, the concept of MUN, yes, yes, Moral United Nations, yes, that, yes, it also teaches the same sense of responsibility mm -hmm. and basically that poise when you carry yourself as a representative of a, as an ambassador of a country, as a delegate, yes. as a delegate, right? Mm -hmm. Internship will also reflect the same things, right? All right. So uh, moving forward uh, to our next uh, subject of NEP. Let's talk about coding. There's a lot of emphasis wherein uh, coding, uh, every child should know coding. Ev uh, basically, skills like analytical skills and all these skills would be very important. And uh, data analytics, Deepak sir, said, or maybe uh, Dilruba ma'am said, data analytics and then coding would be artificial intelligence and all these skills would be absolutely imperative. Is it correct? And I just want to know your opinion. And me being an IT, me coming from an IT company, of course, I should have a different point of view. But then again, I just want to explore this. Is everything has to be related with coding? Because uh, you see Baiju, uh, oh, I'm not supposed to take names. You see uh, so many uh, uh, ads and uh, unnecessary pressure on coding. Deepak, sir, what do you think? Is it right or wrong? देखिए अभी कोई सही नहीं है क्योंकि क्या है कि we realize that the way information technology is moving so they think people they they think yes this is going to be the moral demand क्योंकि जब हम स्कूल में थे तो कंप्यूटर तो था नहीं एट में तो उसी तरीके से कंप्यूटर so they the people are realizing yes this can be very effective we cannot say today, yes, it is a need very much demand. But tomorrow they can say, yes, it is going to be in thing like seeing the way technology is moving ahead. Right. So, nobody, so they can say, yes, it will be of demand because artificial intelligence, you know, things are coming up and the way the technology is moving, you not know so much advanced it can be people are just only thinking basically and riding we, the wave huh, and what we are thinking they may come up with different things then we are going to say yeah it, it was a very great thing <laughs> right 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 absolutely right sir but i guess iske saath saath, there's also one more thing one more uh because I keep on, uh, I'm into marketing, so I keep on researching about all these stuff. Uh, video making is also going to be very huge. I just read somewhere that you, uh, YouTube has actually become the f uh, largest uh, search engine, the biggest search engine in the world now. Apart from Google, to chhod do. Google second ho gaya. Even though it is owned by the same company, but then again, YouTube has become the biggest search engine. That is actually very commendable. So, so Charita, ma'am. Do you think uh, so much emphasis of coding at this point of time is correct, or it's just a way which will which will eventually we'll see where it lands? So, Charita, ma'am, hello. I think so she she paused on pause. Yeah, I guess. Um, okay, some might be some network issue. Well, if it's a coder, it will probably fix it. Anju, what about you? So, to be very frank, I myself feel very much, you know, belittled when I say I don't know coding or I am not part of coding. I am an arts person, humanities person. So here, of course, curriculum needs to be reworked. 
and definitely we have to see where in all these things can be incorporated in all these subjects and fields and that, that is where i am also hoping to learn something because this online platforms as you are saying youtube or zoom or you know all these links microsoft teams and all these things where we were knowing we were not part of it but eventually when it has come time has come and we have all learned to be no ma'am no ma'am anju ma'am no 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 i'll tell you what <laughs> ये ये एक चीज गलत है स्काइप स्काइप होता था याद है स्काइप होता था दिस स्काइप बॉल गेम दिस वॉज दिस स्काइप ड्रॉप द बॉल राइट डाउन आई फील वेरी बैड फॉर स्काइप कंपनी इट वॉज स्काइप बॉल गेम एंड जूम पता नहीं कहाँ से आ गया अचानक से कहां से आ गया और यस दैट इज हाउ द टाइम चेंजेस एंड the which company is going to like youtube you are saying so definitely now every event every topic every competition we come we get through is youtube links that is how we use our youtube channel as well <laughs> or any channel <laughs> so right ma'am time changes so charita ma'am what about you because you got disconnected in between i went yeah and... i just had some network problem sorry but i could join back again uh see when it comes to uh, is the topic still on coding yes yes uh, yes yeah, okay 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 great uh yeah i think in this i'm a little bit different and i would prefer the children given the exposure of coding maybe a little later like when they are in the ninth standard because when yeah. they are young it is too much for them to understand the reality they think everything is fantasy and just do this and you get it and life becomes very easy for them you know they think that is the way it goes and the big uh, uh, advertisements coming and forcing you know the children are more into uh, the other part of it they they just see the outside part they don't get exposed to the behind scene you no know, behind the scene so i think children need to first go with the learning experience and do everything and by the time they are mature enough and they really have a passion for coding and you know Uh, doing up all applications or software or anything uh, that should be the right time to give them so like how uh, uh, dilgo ma- ma'am was telling you know, occasional courses are being exposed to them uh, so that can be a coding also can be a course which can be exposed at the right time when they are mature enough okay. uh, but right they say uh, at the age of 5 at the age of 6 they you know that's actually not advisable okay uh, ma'am okay actually uh, not function properly that's what i as an educational tree right i absolutely concur with you dilruba ma'am yeah. i know i know you want to add on a point yes i want to ma'am, add just, to this ma'am just minute, because ma'am yeah. just for just for it even i realized <laughs> something ma'am fine everything is fine but i'm talking about the indian mindset that we have the indian uh, agar mere samne for example uh, we have kids 13 year old who are developing apps and they are becoming millionaires then i'm talking about your challenge uh-huh. as an educator because i know for a fact parents will come to you ki mere bacche ko steve jobs banao hmm how will you tackle that uh, if parents are uh, i don't know but i have seen more parents who uh, because these are very costly also no like when it comes to that coding and other things you know i don't think parents are that very uh, comfortable in supporting up but as you said if the child is really interested and uh, at the age of 13 the child is a- able to do wonders probably the parents can go in for it and the school can give an option but i wouldn't make it as mandatory because uh, that wouldn't or the be, child huh, you know, it begins uh, the entire process of having multiple exits and uh, yes, dilruba yes. ma'am over to you very quickly yeah. so i have two points number one coding has been mandated by nep as yes. an um, an integral part of the curriculum so how do you offset that all schools will have to adopt coding as a subject from class 6 mm-hmm. onwards we that's don't what I'm have saying. a choice that's what right? it is mandated it's mandated so that's what i'm saying so we don't have a choice you know whether you want to have coding or not like vocational subjects have been integrated into the curriculum in the same way they said all children will learn coding from class 6 onwards Mountain. it is part of the nep and you know and then there's so coding has you know different aspects of course as a result of coding you learn um, you know uh, your you upskill your mathematical skills 
and um, your um, data computing skills, but you also learn storytelling, right? So those uh, soft skills also get updated, design thinking, problem solving. So, you know, um, I, there's, um, uh, not that I'm trying to advocate coding at a young age, but all that I'm trying to say is that we are saddled with coding because it's part of NEP. Right, and we as educationists, if you feel strongly about it, we should say that it should be an optional subject. It should not be yeah. imposed trust on the students at Other, such a young age. Otherwise, isn't it the same thing? It is. Isn't it taking a step back? Deepak sir, ये तो फिर वही हो गया कि कोई multiple exit नहीं कोई वोच नहीं ये तो वो rule of डंडा है कि सीखना ही पड़ेगा. Deepak sir, what about you? नहीं देखिए फिर कोई डंडे का तो मतलब ही नहीं ना तो यहाँ पे डंडा को अब तो जमाना बदल गया है अब तो जो दिल कर रहा है ठीक जो दिल कर रहा है ठीक वो ही करना है यू हैव टू डू व्हाट योर व्हाट यू फील इज राइट व्हाट योर हार्ट सेज इज राइट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नो कोडिंग इज ओके बट अ पर्सन हु डज नॉट लाइक कोडिंग ही मे हैव इंक्लिमिनेशन टूवर्ड्स अदर थिंग तो यू अब ठीक है व्हाट Ma'am is saying it is the need, but you cannot say if if somebody does not is not willing uh, or is not in IT or does not like IT, he can do any other thing. We are talking about the exit also, and we are talking about the policy that expansion. What you say, expansion learning is the need. What you what skills you have got, you have to show. Now it is the time that what skills you have got, you have to show to the world who you are, not by. Learning. Here yeah, they were saying, no, that okay, you learn and then show. Now you learn and you do and then you learn. Yeah. अगर आपको वो coding अच्छी लगती है, then you do it. Are you getting what I'm trying no, to say? That it should be optional for me as a student whether I want to adopt it or not. But ma'am is yes. saying that it is mandated now that it has to be there. No, it yes, is. the part of yes. the NEP. MEP says yes, it is mandatory. But yeah. slowly, yes, let's see how we go about. I don't think so because then where are where will the artists? Where are the arts will go? For But MEP MEP has come out. It has not been implemented. Implemented as of yet. Yeah. There are so many things which will change in the coming few months of time. Very true. Very true. Yes. That's true. It is not that it is over. It will because it is an. Uh, again, I'm saying a new thing for them. What they are trying to say now. What I'm telling you, experiential learning. What right. you say now? What is sick? Sick means to learn. Jo abhi ye keh rahe ki sick means to learn and mm. keep on learning, lifelong learning. Mm. So ye to hamare Guru Nanak Dev Ji ne pehle hi keh diya tha. Right. So chale. So keep on learning. Lifelong learning has to go on. You, there's not even one day you don't learn. You learn from everywhere. And now this is what this new education policy is saying: that you learn, and what you learn, you like it. You teach. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as it. So they, there is national education policy. I am a journalist also. I am running two magazines, Indian Observer and National Awareness Time. There is so many flaws in this na this national education policy, which in time will be all right. But it is a very good initiative right. by the yeah. government. Very true. There is change coming, and which was yeah. need. Right. Yeah, very true. And that's why we are having this webinar. The whole idea was to basically the topic was flexible curriculum. I don't remember what the topic was. We we came yeah. on to NEP. We went on to digital all like then we went into <laughs> experiential learning. So that's what I love about my webinars that there is so much to gain and so much to talk about, and internships were also there. So uh, I I thought I think my team must have said that it will only take half an hour or forty five minutes, but we are way over one hour. So I won't take you much your much time. uh very quickly last thoughts one by one starting with dilruba ma'am on um the entire education system so i feel that you know uh when um we are looking for a school for our children right uh we need to uh, study the prospectus of the school and see what is the vision what is the mission statement and see whether um, It's what um, 
we want our children to grow and develop as uh, in this fast evolving global uh, world. So um, it's very important to have an educational system that will optimize the potential of the child, like I spoke about multiple intelligences, and make sure that each child finds his or her bearing, finds uh, the children find their space, and um, there is growth, holistic growth and development, and each child emerges with a well-rounded personality, taking into account both scholastic and scholastic subjects. And learning is joyful. And learning by doing, right? Uh, learning which is hands-on, and learning which makes you a productive member of a fast-evolving global society. Okay, wonderful words, ma'am. Deepak, sir, over to you. Last yes. words. What I would like to say, sir, um, India is going to be knowledge superpower very soon. Absolutely, that's true. And we educators are there to help these children grow and become one. The one like Swami Vivekananda, the one like there's no there's countless of words like but like all you see, there's been super power factory from India. Yeah. So now with this education policy, we are going to come up with more people, those who are going to contribute towards the global peace and uh, prosperity. And what I would like to say is that this webinar was an excellent platform where I could hear the comments of all the principals, Dilrubaji, Anjuji, Venkateshan, Man, and you, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me and would like to be your uh, part of your platform whenever you want. Uh, to be wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your words. Uh, before I let you all leave, I have Sucharita ma'am left and then Anju ma'am left as well. Uh, yeah. Sucharita ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so, as it was a very nice opportunity again uh, to share uh, so many topics. As you said, no, it was not focused to one. Yeah. It was actually a very wide thing and really enjoyed uh, sharing my views and you know getting to know others suggestions and very nice and as per NEP vocational and academics uh, doesn't have any hard separation they are going to work hand in hand and I think it is going to be it's just a draft only probably the experience is what we share should give a fine tune to it and you know it is going to reach all of us in a better way and it's going to really bring out all children as a lifelong uh, learner and a global learner. I really wanted to mention that when Anjuman said that India has to become globally, you know, I actually wanted to discuss the topic of global collaboration as well, but then yeah. we are already at the last point. Yeah, anyway, but anyway, we had touched that. So I was just wondering that's a really, very nice thought. And our vision should go now to that level, right. you know, just right. not within India, it should be globally. So we should prepare our children to meet the global standards. And that is how this uh, NEP policy is also going to help us as educators and uh, come up with very uh, beautiful uh, opportunities and uh, you know, platform being delivered to the children to take better choices. Once again, thanks for putting me into this webinar and uh, very nice. I had really a very nice uh, experience and learning happening here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sucharita ma'am. Anju ma'am, over to you. Yes. To conclude, I would say NEP is national education policy or a passport to the future for tomorrow to be the global learners at par with the world. So our students, we want to be rising and shining all across the world. So Jai Hind and Jai you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that is all. Guru Purab is there. Happy Guru Purab. Enjoy. Let's Happy yeah. Guru Purab. Happy, Happy Guru Purab Deepak Shah. Happy Guru Purab Chacharita Ma'am. Happy, Happy Guru Purab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Why Thank Guruji you. the Khalsa? Why Guruji the Fateh? Thank, Thank you, you so much, everyone, Thank for you. giving me your valuable time. बहुत ज़्यादा मैंने कुछ ज़्यादा ही लंबा कर दिया था. But uh, thank you so much. It was a very beautiful session. Yeah. And as usual, yeah. I had so much to learn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you.